How you going and welcome back to another one of my videos. In this video, we're looking at the most important feature to me and the reason why I selected the Epson 9300 in the first place. The motorized lens and memory function. It is fantastic and it's a must have if you've got a CinemaScope screen. So sit back and relax as I go through a variety of content with different aspect ratios. To start with, I'm just showing you my room with the lights on just so you can get an idea of the size of the screen and the aspect ratio and all that because I'm going to turn the lights off later on in the video so you won't get to see all this. This sound can be deeper. More dimensional. There's no need to Hey, hey what are you doing? The projector's behind you, you silly buffer. With Dolby Atmos, audio can precisely move in any direction within this theater. Whether the sound sweeps from the back, it's all the way. And for those that are wondering, I got this screen from Oz Theatre Screens. It's 135 inches, 2.37 to 1 aspect ratio, and it looks fantastic. I'm really happy that I bought it. Or moves anywhere in between. Today, we will feel every dimension. How does that sound? As you can see here, when I enlarge the 16 by 9 image, it overshoots onto the wall and timbers. It lights them up. Eventually, I'm going to cover all that with black velvet and it'll look a lot better and you won't see as much of an overshot image extending down past the frame. Also, throughout this video, have a look at the black velvet they've used on the frame around the screen. It works really well at projecting the light and does a far better job than some other brands that I've seen. And this helps with content that's 235 to 1, 237 to 1, and 2.4 to 1. So you can overshoot the image in any direction you want a little bit, and you won't see it. This is why I like the zoom memory function. If this was a projector that was fixed, and you couldn't zoom in and out, and you had a 237 to 1 ratio uh, cinemascope screen, you wouldn't be able to see the menu properly. But with one click of the button, I can zoom out. I can see everything on the 16 by 9 screen and zoom back appropriately for my movie. This is Dolby Atmos demo disc that I'm playing here. It's really good for showing off to your friends when they come over. That bloody Atmos is fantastic, by the way. Dolby Atmos, it is fantastic. That's another video altogether. Where are you, Max? Here they come again. Worming their way into the black. Right now you're thinking that looks really good, but it's going to get a whole lot better. I tell myself, they cannot touch me. They are long dead. That last video was obviously Mad Max and in Cinemascope. This next one's in 16 by 9 I'm going to overshoot the image and show you what it looks like on the full width of the screen and then shrink it back down again to how I have it sometimes. Because we are so used to hearing sound this way, we don't notice that it is merely a fraction of what its potential could be. But what if sound could be extraordinary again? Engines are up and burning. Overhead. Or 
goes anywhere in between the sound. Now onto the PlayStation 4 and gaming in general. I usually have it overlap a little bit at the top and bottom. I feel like I don't miss anything if I do this and I get a bit wider screen. In Battlefield 1 and, and Call of Duty, I do zoom in to 237 to 1. I find that I don't really miss anything by doing this off the height and, and bottom. Sometimes I even uh, drop it down a little bit as well. I move the image down so I can see a little bit above me. It helps a little bit more in Battlefield 1 where where you have more enemies attack you from above like planes and uh, snipers and whatnot. Sometimes I feel like when I zoom in on 16x9 content it doesn't really affect the composition of the image. I think it only really affects those that know how the composition should look. But sometimes it looks fine. So I was waiting for a patch to download with Battlefield 1 and I lost my patience so let's just move on to Call of Duty. One for the chimp. And that makes two. Oh yeah, down you go. Oh, through the glass. Yep, you too. Oh. Surely I did better than that. <laughs> Too busy showing you how this bloody projector works. With the game tied and two seconds left in the match, the Bulls have the ball. They inbound to Michael Jordan. He takes one dribble, up fakes, shoots, nothing but net. The Bulls win. The crowd's going wild. <sighs> what a legend Michael Jordan is. What a shot. All right. Let's get serious now. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. And um, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.